Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to another uh, episode of Do You Make Music with me, your host, Mr. Aiden Harold, coming at you live from the Willard Building for the Daily Collegian. And today we have on um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sam from uh, Mailbox Office. Say hi, Sam. Hello, hello everybody. How's uh, how's everybody doing out there? <laughs> <laughs> you having a good uh, good Friday? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Everything everything's done uh, for for the whole week. Uh, have nothing else to do. Hopefully, uh, I can get back home soon and uh, continue uh, r- uh, doing some songwriting, other stuff like that. Yeah. Because uh, you know we're because I'm I'm getting back to the point. I'm finally getting back to the point where the well. The well has been filled back oh. up a little bit, so so it's like I'm 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 getting feeling feeling the creative juices for the past couple of days, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I I I love getting that feeling when yeah. you like you're just so full of ideas. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. Uh, mm-hmm. So then, really quick, then before we actually get into that, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your music as Mailbox Office? Yeah, yeah. so um, Mailbox Office. Uh, this project initially started out as a pure bedroom thing uh that i that i got going on um i started doing some recordings i'm trying to remember exactly when i think it was like around like fall 2020 is like when i really started to like get really in, enamored and just like fascinated with um the idea of uh, recording and uh you know getting my ideas down in like some really tangible way for the first time because um like i had because I have these things like going in my head for like a long time, but I didn't really know what to mm. how, what to do or how to do those things. Yeah, yeah. How and, to get them um, onto, how to get them onto? Team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And I just and I just went into it completely blind. A lot of trial and error and frustration. <laughs> but um, but hey, I, I eventually got to a point where um, I had a batch of songs that eventually became uh, my first like EP that I put out. Mm. And um, I mean, looking back, l- looking back on that one, like, I'm gonna be honest, it's not good. <laughs> it's you know, I, it's, it's, I, I mean, me personally, like, I I think it, it is just not good at all. But everybody starts. Somewhere. Yeah, every, yeah, exactly. Everybody starts somewhere. It's square and, one. Yeah, yeah, and like when I look back, it, when I look and I like I listen back on them, I'm like, okay, you know what, like. I could see like what I was trying to go for, like and obviously I didn't get there, but like you know, like the the ideas were still there, the ideas were still l- laid out, and I like actually followed through with them. So like in that sense, I was very like proud and satisfied with myself. So really quickly yeah. for our uh, listeners back home who aren't um who don't kind of keep up with the terminology, when you say bedroom, right? Why don't you uh t- tell us a little bit about that? So is your is your style like um well first break down bedroom and then. Is it like yeah. a bedroom pop, bedroom alt? I've listened to it, but I want to hear you like. Define, yeah, yeah. You know? So, so the way I define uh, like bed, like bedroom is like I, I sort of sit, um, explain it as like bedroom recordings or like mm. just having a DIY ethos to yeah. like when you, when uh, you make music. It's not really like for me. It's never been about a particular genre or style. It's just really, it's just really that ethos and like that drive to yeah, well, like create even though you have like n- none of like the standard or typical resources that like a musician might have and like so many like so many of like my favorite musicians and so many of the ones that I look up to like are all like DIY and just had no idea what they were getting into or had no idea what they were doing but who, who does that include um I'm trying to ooh, ooh. all right all right all right so oh my god so for example um would say like um uh, daniel johnston i think is a really good example like um you know uh, he's considered what's the term used like outsider music and mm. what that means essentially is like somebody who doesn't have any formal training or like has a very elementary like fundamental understanding of music the, th- the thing about it is his music like if it, like if you've heard it or not like it is far more powerful than most music that like i listen to like on a daily basis and um, yeah, he's one that uh, I really admire, and just his his story is just like heartbreaking. But um, yeah, it's that I also I also love Phil Elvrum of uh, the man behind the recording projects, uh, the microphones, and uh, Mount Erie. Oh, Mount Erie! Yeah. I've, I've yeah, heard yeah, of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember like a lot of a lot of um, the stories he's told and the things he goes on about. Like him, yeah, he has this like old abandoned church that he runs like analog recording gear through and like I've been just seeing some of like his process and some of the things that he does is uh yeah just really really inspiring 
Mm. So yeah. So uh, what, what particularly about this angle really like attracts you to it? Is it like the elements of like control, like it's just you who can do it, or is it like just um, <clears throat> not needing to like in- invest or like uh, what's the word thinking of like like purchase mm-hmm. like uh, professional studios yeah. and, and session artists and stuff yeah, like yeah. that or. And is there is it like one thing in particular? Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's uh, it actually reminds me of something that um, reminds me of something that Rick Rubin said. I'm probably gonna butcher exactly what, what his quote was. A successful, he said, like a successful creative pro- project or like all of all of your creativity, like it happens up here. Like there is no amount of, I mean, <laughs> it happens in the mind. Yeah, I was gonna but, say, yeah, you're, I should make you're, that. You're pointing at your brain. Yeah, yeah. It happens <laughs> in the mind. I should make that distinction for for the people out there. But um. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's no amount of gear, there's no amount of money that you could spend to make to make that change, uh, the, the level of creativity um, that you have. And I think that's the most important thing for me is like, I just want to make sure that I keep my creativity, like I make sure I'm constantly cultivating it. Uh, <laughs> no, I get you, yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah, you're trying to keep mm-hmm. up with your own creativity and make mm-hmm. sure that it it translates yeah. onto a yeah. tape, right? So, mm-hmm. how, how do you think that's kind of evolved for you over the last few um, last yeah. last few years of Mailbox Office? Yeah, yeah. So, I think uh, a lot of it for me is just having an idea in my head that I really want to execute, and then just like going through the process of trying to execute what's up here, like to the best of my ability. It's, it's definitely very, it's definitely very frustrating. Uh, It's definitely uh, tedious a lot of the times. Um, And it's also, it's also really overwhelming. Like sometimes like I have like choice paralysis from all of the different ways I think I could like take it or like maybe like, I think I want something to sound a certain way, but then I'm like, oh wait, but actually this, this like synth or like this like plugin over here is like, you know, I really, I really want to, really want to try this out instead. Mm-hmm. Actually, it, it's just a matter of me trying to get it to sound like how I hear it. Yeah, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. I'm actually curious to talk then really quickly. I uh, gave your uh, first album here a listen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, we forgot what year <laughs> we're in. Yep. Which came out? Oh my god, that's 2022. Oh that's two god. years now. Ah, wow, I can't even. <laughs> Holy crap! But well, what I'm curious uh, about with, with this album um, uh, is there's a uh, mixture of uh, songs with lyrics and without. Yeah, yeah. And that's um, that 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 just um, it strikes me as interesting. Not like nobody's done it before, but I just <laughs> yeah. mean like from from your standpoint, what what about a song makes you want to either keep it as just the instrumental or like add lyrics to it? Like, um, is there a grand distinction between the two, or is it more just like, oh, I didn't really feel like there was anything to put on there? Yeah, yeah. I, de- I definitely I definitely don't go in with the intention of, like, okay, this song needs lyrics, or, like, okay, this song, like, doesn't need lyrics. It's like, um, I, I start with, like, the bass idea, and then as I keep building and building on top of that, then, like, I determine, like, I sort of think to myself, I'm like, does this, does, does this really need lyrics, or can I just, like let it breathe can i let other things happen without the need for me to <laughs> come come up, come over top of it i got yeah. you mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm also curious i always ask this whenever i talk to artists who have albums out but when you were making this album was there a did you put any ideas behind how you sequence the songs and uh, the order that they're in um, or was it just kind of like and eh, this feels like the, the best yeah way yeah to go? um i think like the more i sat with the songs like the more the more i spent because like because like um for for majority of the time that I was working on them, I wasn't thinking about like sequencing them or ordering them. I think it was just like there just came a certain point in the process where I was like, "Oh, this makes the most sense to put like this song here, or this makes the most sense to like end with this, like et cetera, et cetera." And um, yeah, I think yeah, I think uh, the way I sequenced it, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty satisfied with the way I sequenced it. Um, I think it flows pretty, I think it fro- uh, flows pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I never, I never want to put like too much emphasis on like track sequencing or like what song comes next. Cause like, I think it, like there's a certain point where you just have to be able to let things go and not be so like perfectionist, perfectionist about it, which is something that like I, I really, really struggle with. No, yeah. You know? I, I imagine yeah. like whenever I talk to any of, uh, other uh, solo artists right i i, I mm-hmm. found that's a consistent um thing that that people talk about because yeah, yeah. with a band there's always going to be conflicts and disagreements yeah, exactly. or like 
you have to reach like a state of compromise yeah, exactly. but with, with yourself it's about exactly which is like what i what i really like about uh being that's also what i like really like about being in a band is like knowing when to just be like to just be like hands off like okay like i trust everybody else or like i trust this person to follow through and like you don't really have to like do as much or like worry about anything as much and i think yeah that that uh kind of collaboration is uh, is a uh, really good it's something that i definitely want to keep doing more of yeah. So, yeah i'm curious then have you found any big differences in like your creativity or just how you express yourself when you're in a band uh, comparatively yeah. yeah so yeah so whenever i like i'm in a band I, it's definitely like my creativity it, not, not to say it's like more restrictive but like my creativity or like my ideas have to be i think more much more th- well thought out mm. as opposed to solo like um it's like i have to it's like Ideally, I, I go to the band and I'm like, okay, here is a finished song. Cause the, <laughs> like, what do you think? You know what I mean? It can't just be like, oh, here's like this random, like eight second, like lick that I came up with. You know what I mean? Because it's, 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 it's like, like they, they have to understand it, right? They have exactly. To, they have to see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And like, as opposed to like doing things solo, like it's a lot more chaotic and like just a lot more free form, which is like, which like I love but like I also hate it too at the, at the same time um because like you're pretty much you're not restricted by anything you're not restricted by anybody else or any other outside uh, factors but on the flip side of that like you're constantly like thinking to yourself or like wondering to yourself like oh like is this good or maybe like oh like is there something I can perhaps do different or can I change this or should I change that? And it's just like those questions like constantly going, going through your mind, like every time you sit down to, to, to create. So I'm curious and really quickly, how many bands have you uh, been yeah. a part of? Yeah. So I'm in, so I'm in a, a couple, so I'm in a couple, uh, right now. Um, I'm, I'm in one, I mean, I'm in, I'm in two of them that are both like fairly, fairly new. I'm in a one band we call ourselves, uh, don't panic. It's completely safe. <laughs> um, and, uh, it's really fun. Like we get together, we get together and like just jam out ideas every week. And, um, I, it's actually, I do it with, the, it, there's four of us and I'm the only like music student. Everybody else is like a arts person, like visual, visual arts person or like sculpture or something like that. So, um, so like most of our gigs come from like playing in like galleries on campus like for example like we just played us at zoller gallery last week for like an art exhibition opening huh. um and uh yeah that's uh that's really fun and i really enjoy doing that and then um the other band that i'm in we call ourselves uh fretless fretless acacia guys if you're uh, if you're uh, listening to this uh, shout out shout out you we just played our first gig uh january 18th uh, at doggies which was uh which was really really fun it was i mean it was was, it was pretty chaotic and pretty stressful but it was it was definitely worth it like by the time we got there and like everybody everybody like gathered around and um yeah it was just it was yeah it was it was really really awesome do you uh take ideas from like both of the um well do you take ideas from all of your musical projects and find that like they influence each other in any way yeah yeah definitely um like for example um like for for um uh fretless acacia for example like uh we're working on we're working on playing some like grateful dead tunes you know you know what i mean right now like like to play it to play at the bars and um i use sort of like those those spaces or those pockets where like i can improvise and things like that because like i really like because because everybody everybody in that band is a really really good musician like really really good like (laughs) far better than i am um so yeah, I just I just take um, what I hear and what I listen to from them, and I try and apply that to like for example when we do like, don't panic is completely safe like and we, where we have like more like um, like where, where we have some more jammy uh, kind of songs and I'm like oh, okay I can really I can really like let loose here and like express like my musical knowledge and like the skills that I have and like share with like those guys you know, and it's like that through line I think is like is like really cool. Nice. So. Nice. No, I well, I have to imagine being, uh, being in a band with like people who are really good. That does that give you like a sense of like not not like competition per se, but like you yeah. have to like, I guess like keep up in a sense. Yeah. But like, yeah. It, like 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 yeah. it's it gets a source of drive to improve. Right? Oh no! Oh oh yeah! For sure! For sure! I definitely like feel like every time I think like I have something down, I'm like oh wait, like they sort of change this up in like a subtle way or. 
they 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 like are like we sort of like split parts and like play them like in different ways or like different kinds of styles and like they're able to all like switch that stuff like <laughs> uh, like at the drop of the hat you know what i mean which is like i i definitely struggle to do but um yeah it really it really motivate it really motivates me and wants me to like be the best that i possibly be possibly can be and bring forth like my best self uh f- for those guys because uh yeah Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, we've talked a little bit about your uh, current like present and whatnot. So why don't we just um, talk a little bit about the past? How did you? Yeah. Uh, what, what 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 do you think drove you to music in general? Was there always that yeah. love there, or was there maybe like one kind of inciting <laughs> point to it? I was only I only really like fell head over heels for music like recently, like only like only like starting. I was like around like when I was around like 15, 16 or so, like that was like when I really started to get enamored with it. And I'm, and um, like my, my dad has always been like just a massive music fan and he would play all sorts of like, I mean, I remember like growing up, he would play just like the classic like rock stuff, like from sixties and seventies, things like that. And that's like, that's like the first thing that I uh, became uh, accustomed to, but I never really like, it was, it was always just like background noise to me like I never really like fully like try to engage with music in any like meaningful way um I remember I I also picked up I picked up uh, the cello uh, in third grade because I thought that would be fun and it would be uh, enjoyable because like I didn't want to play violin because everybody else was playing violin <laughs> you know what I mean so I was like yeah I'm gonna be different I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do cello yeah I'm not like everybody else guys um and I, like I did that, and I remember I I uh, I enjoyed it for like the first several years. I remember after after that, like I I stuck with it, but I started to like grow bored and tired of it, and I just kind of I just kind of viewed it as like another like class or like another like homework assignment that I had to do, and like I wasn't really like. I just didn't really care about that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, yeah. It was, the, the passion just wasn't. Yeah, there. exactly. The passion like wasn't there, but like honestly, honestly like. I was kind of at a crossroads like during that during that era like in the early in the early tweens you know mm. like where I just I just didn't really I don't know I just didn't really like care about anything to be honest like I, I just sort of like drifted and blew like wherever the wind decided to push me you know mm. and I was like okay now we're here tumbleweed exactly yeah that's that's exact that's exactly how I felt like for for that period of time but um but yes so if I'm remembering correctly so, so, so let me so let me follow the through line. So I, I initially really started to get into like hip hop music and like and like rap music and stuff like that. And that was like something that that was like really like the first genre that I was like really really like engaged in and I was like interested in. I was like, oh my god, this is actually, I was like, this is actually like really really cool. And you Holy found crap. you found yeah. it on your own. Yeah, I remember like I started out like listening to all like the big names like um like drake or like whenever like j cole like whenever like forest hills drive came out people mm. were like losing their minds over it you know what i mean like it was just like st- stuff like that is what i was mostly uh keeping up with but like I, it was it was just contained like in that bubble like i didn't really like try to explore or like put in the effort to like find like new things but th- then like it started to like expand a little a little bit more where like my dad had like um illegally ripped uh, pirated downloads of like good kid mad city and like to pimple butterfly really? <laughs> from, from from kendrick and he was like i think you would like this yeah i think you would like this and i remember like i listened to i listened to t-pab first which was like the worst mistake i could have made because like <laughs> i remember I, like the like after like song three like literally after king kunta i was like okay i'm bored you know mm-hmm. i'm like i shut it off and i was like like a, this is not interesting you know what i mean you weren't ready for that yeah i wasn't i wasn't ready for it i wasn't ready for it but then i went and listened to good kid mad city and i was like okay this is actually okay i was like okay this is actually really good like this is actually killer like that was definitely like the one i should have started with and, you, know, <laughs> you know it was like it was like a lot more immediate and i was like okay yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah. yeah this is really good and then i was like okay, you know what maybe i should go back Try to, 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 to t-pab and check it out and then that was the moment where i was like oh my god like I was like, okay, so it. now, so now I sort of know like what um, music like 
can be but like still still not fully though because no because keep in mind like i'm still in like the like just like the hip-hop bubble i'm still mm. like i'm still in that area but like you haven't fully expanded yeah i'm, I'm starting to like i'm starting to get the idea no, like in yeah. my in my head they're like oh my god there might be something more to this you know yeah 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 and then uh also that yeah 2017 also like that same year my, <laughs> my dad also um he also ripped me an illegal pirated copy of, of flower boy <laughs> By Tyler, By Tyler yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was like, super funny. There was, like, three songs missing. And then there was, like, a completely random song by, like, an entirely different artist, like, at the end. And I was, like, you know what I mean? I was, like, kind of confused and stuff. But <laughs> this that, is an interesting yeah. track list. But that, that was, like, another moment where I was, like, oh, my God. Like, like I'm really, like, engaged in this. And, like, it's yeah. not just, like, because, like, it, that album is, like, not just, like, straight up like hip hop, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, like he experiments no, like, with like all the sorts of different like styles and like indie and stuff like that. Did that encourage you to branch out in your list? Yeah. So I think like, I think that was the moment where like, where like I began to be like, okay, like maybe I should start like exploring a little bit more. Oh yeah. Then I discovered Mr. Mr. Anthony Fantano <laughs> of, uh... Uh, of the needle drop. <laughs> I remember the first video of his I ever watched was his, was his damn review. That's, I remember that's the first video of his I ever watched. Do you agree with the score? Yeah. Uh, the score, honestly... I know Fantana's review of Damn yeah. is a very much... It's, like, controversial. <laughs> honestly, like, thinking now, I, I think, yeah. I think I think Damn, like, a seven. Because, like, there's, like, really, really high highs. But then, like, there's just some songs where I'm, like... I'm just, like, I'm just, like kind of bored. I'm, like... Uh, so I know really Fa- Fantano's preferences are kind of like their own like yeah, yeah. it's it's its own kind of meme on on yeah. online of like the, the whole like Fantano core they call mm-hmm. it. Yep. Did you uh did you yeah. end up kind of falling down that rabbit hole? Yeah, uh, like I kind of hate to admit it, but like, you know what? Yeah, I definitely I definitely did fall down the rabbit hole because like because then by the time I had like discovered him, then after after like Kendrick and like Flower Boy and all that. Then it was time for me to. Um, then it was time for me uh, to listen to Death Crips. <laughs> that was, that's the that's the next one where I was like, okay, yeah, here we go. Let's let's check it out. But that's a natural progression for you, right? Because yeah, that was yeah, exactly. also hip hop, but very experimental. Yeah, exactly. And... Very, very. And it was. I remember like when I listened to the Money Store for the very first time. It was very, very jarring. Like I had a migraine. <laughs> like the first time I heard it, I was like, I was like, oh my god, like wow. But like I eventually just like. <laughs> And I was like, oh my god, wow. And I was like, this is like really like tough to listen to. But I was like, but I was like, oh wait, but but but, but he gave it a 10, so it must be I was like, it must be good, you know. Well, that, that, you know? That's, that's the general you know, like that, that yeah, I yeah. hear with, with at least with Death Crips, it's very much yeah. they start out as like a meme band for people, but then yeah. you listen and you're like, oh, and you're like, oh my god, yeah. Well then you listen and you think, oh, this is bad, but then you keep coming back. And then you're and like, like, wait, oh, this is good. Like, wait, yeah. <laughs> and you start thinking about it and you're like, oh, hang on, hang on. But yeah, so so there was that. And then where do you think you kind of hit that point where you started branching out in all directions? Like branching what, out in all directions. So yeah, yeah, into what you what you listen to, like with your current music. Yeah, yeah. So it was like August. It was August 2017. I decided. I don't know why this was like the first thing I decided to branch out of and listen to. That was like not. That was just like not hip hop, <laughs> like at all. Like anything, like no similarities, like not like R and B or like soul or something like that. Just like completely like different and i remember that that month i listened to um the seer by the band swans Mm. and um that was like that was the pivotal moment for Mm. me right there like that album like i i will like i will never forget the feeling of like listening to that album for the first time like it was it was like spellbinding like like, honestly like spellbinding isn't even like i doesn't even like begin to cover it like like it, it, like I, it, it's like so hard to describe you know what i mean but like it was just like because it was just unlike anything i'd ever heard before like every single song was like so ambitious and so like dense and like big and like and, and epic but also like mysterious and like something like unsettling about it and yeah it just it just permanently redefined like what music was capable of for me like especially at that time ever since then i was like wow that was really good. And then, like, I thought to myself, I was like, there has to be, like, other stuff like this out there. And then I sort of, like, like, like it sort of dawned on me. I was like, wait, what else am I missing? I was like, there's, like, whole other worlds of, like, music and, like, of, like, genres and, like, cultures that, like, I am just completely missing out on. And I yeah. was like, and I was like, I, it's time to fix that. I was it's like, it's time to fix world. that. And that's, and then onward. And still to this day, I am constantly checking out new music, new like, whether it's, like, new releases or things, like, 
back in the day that like I still haven't heard and stuff like that. And like I'm I'm just I'm always listening like to new things. Like I never want to stop like discovering music. Yeah. So yeah. Well, hey, before we uh, talk about your future and then uh, wrap, I think we can get into our uh, fun section of the uh, little interview here. All right, all right, all right. This is where I toss you some of our gutterball questions. Okay, okay. Sourced <laughs> from the Instagram itself at okay, Aiden's okay. Portfolio. The right, uh, right. gutterballs. I feel like, man, it needs like a theme or something, you know. Mm-hmm. It needs a, <laughs> to section out. Yeah, it. yeah. It needs one of the, you know, da 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 it, anyway, some podcasts have hard balls, some podcasts yeah. have curveballs. We yeah. have gutter balls. <laughs> have your expectations accordingly. Right, this right, is right. only the best journalism crowdsourced from the internet. So here we go. Mm-hmm. This one is a very, uh, very fun one. You have to replace mm-hmm. your legs with vegetables. What kind of vegetable do you choose? <laughs> now think hard about this, Sam. Okay. Your okay. life depends on. It. <laughs> oh my god, my life depends on it. Okay. It's like, I, I would I still be able to control? I, I the believe vegetables so. With okay. I think okay. you'll you'll it'll I think it'll be like a peg leg almost. Oh uh, okay okay. Like cucumbers seem tempting, right? But yeah yeah. I don't know how sturdy they are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think I think I think like beets. Beets for legs, because like they're nice and round, and fat and. They're not too skinny, but like they're at the bottom. So like they're the base. So like they're not, they're not like heavy or weighing you down or making you like fall over. Mm. So like you could like walk around, like you might, you're definitely going to be slower than everybody else, you know, cause you have beats for legs. But um, like it, you're going to be like, I feel like you're going to be sturdy. Like you're going to be like locked. You're not going to have like too many issues as compared to like most other vegetables. You know? What's throwing me off is they didn't specify like what mm. happens to your feet. Like if this, if they're oh, going to yeah, be that's feet true. Well. Yeah, yeah. Cause you might just have like beats for legs, but then you're rocking the Tim's underneath. Yeah. You walk oh into the God. you walk up to the function. You got like beat legs and black air forces on underneath. The... <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I was thinking like because I was thinking like I just had to be like which is the beat like at the bottom. That was like what was going yeah. That's what feet, I was but thinking. like that's actually that's actually a very good point. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, yeah. we can go into number two yeah. now, right? <laughs> two out of three. This one is actually pretty interesting. I, I like. Okay, did you uh, see the movie yesterday when it came out? Oh, that's that's like that's the movie about like how like the Beatles didn't exist or like yeah, and, this like, dude wakes up in a like... world where like the Beatles oh, don't yeah, exist yeah, 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 and he yeah. has to like he, yeah, yeah. he realizes that and he just goes through and starts recreating their so yeah. This question is um, which band or artist would you pick to live out the plot of yesterday? So like if you woke up Ugh. tomorrow and they didn't exist, you'd be able to just Ugh. completely recreate their discography. <sighs> <laughs> And, yeah, just be able, just magically off, be able, yeah, just magically be able to pass it off as your own. <laughs> just magically be able to recreate. <laughs> yeah, that's God. That's that's why that movie was so bad. If Kendrick Lamar didn't exist, yeah. would you be able to recreate T Pain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like even if even if I could, I don't think I'd want to. To be honest, like that is not that is not that is not my place. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, I would say. Uh, Oh god! Like I feel like, uh, like if I if I say it, like I'm gonna I'm gonna feel bad because I'm like I, I like st- I like st- I like it's not truly mine. Like I, like I steal all your work, but like at the same time I'm like oh my god. They don't exist in this world. Yeah, they don't Just... exist. They don't exist. You're right. You're right. They don't exist. Um, I think the band or like whose music I would most want to like make my own or like say like hey oh hey like I made these would be um would be uh, Animal Collective. Mm. They're like they're probably. I mean, honestly, like they're probably my favorite band. Like I just love everything that they do, whether it's like together or like solo projects, and like they're just like like their sound is like so it's just so idiosyncratic and it just varies so differently from album to album. They just they just don't sound like anything else. Mm. Like I've ever heard. Like they're what like Pitchfork core. Like they're like they're, they're like indie darlings. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? But like. Using, like, the term indie, I feel like, especially nowadays, like, to describe them, I feel like it's just, like, such an extreme disservice. It's really because, broad. Like, it's it's really broad, and, like, just the range that they, that they cover is so broad, and just everything that they do is, like, so creative. They just accentuate my vibe. Perfectly, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's what I'm picking. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And then, he, okay, here's our last one. This is kind of fun. Uh, Tell me if you remember it um, or not, but uh, what was your worst haircut? My worst haircut? Um... Ooh, yeah. D- easily, my worst one was when I got like oh, just a full, full buzz oh. all the way around, like in fourth or fifth. You grade. went for the Harry Styles. <laughs> yeah. I, oh yeah, I, I went for the Harry Styles. 
I remember like. Did you have the head for it? No, I didn't. The head shape? I absolutely do not have the head for it. I absolutely do not have the head shape for it. Like, it, was, it was really bad. Like, <laughs> God, I remember distinct. I remember distinctly getting clowned for that for that full bus. Like, I, like people were just like, "What?" They're like, "What is that?" Like, why did you do that? No, I, that's why I like this yeah. question. Cause everybody, yeah. everybody remembers their worst haircut. Oh, oh yeah. For me, it was oh, yeah. it was fourth grade. I, I got I got a buzz at a oh. at, at but it was at Supercut, so they didn't do it right. So I was just wearing yeah. a hat for like two months. Oh, terrible. Well, how, what did the, how do you get how do you get a buzz cut incorrect? How do you how do you it's how do you, super, how do, you do that? Supercuts. Find a way. <laughs> but anyway, that's they find a way. I guess yeah. But <laughs> that's it for for the uh, our uh, mm-hmm. our gutter ball section. Now mm-hmm. we get to talk a little bit about um your future. So yeah. we'll, we'll 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 talk about what you got going on now or mm-hmm. later, and then we can uh get into shout outs and um yeah. yeah, and then we can wrap. But uh, so tell us mm-hmm. what do you got coming out? Are you working on an album or any EPs yeah, or yes. anything at all? So I think my goal. Uh, mus- musically right now I think that my goal is um, to make um, my next album be like be like my senior project because I because uh, I do uh, music tech uh, here uh, mm. at the university and um like everybody like everybody has like a senior project that they, that they need to complete like in order to, order to graduate and I'm thinking like I want I want like my I want my next uh, record to be that uh, project and um yeah, I'm, I'm getting started uh, now, just like sort of uh, getting ideas together, like have like little the well like, is full. Exactly, like getting just getting little um little like melodies or certain like chord changes like developed in uh in my head and uh, yeah definitely have I I've definitely had a lot of um what, what I like to call like what I like to call a, like the three a, the three a.m. idea where like you just get a really good song idea or good musical idea just like at the most inconvenient time possible but you gotta go through but it's like you just like you have to do it like like, like i like i had like so many moments cold. where like i woke up and i was like oh my god and i'm like so <laughs> tired i'm like half asleep i'm like well i need to I need to get this down I, like open up voice memos i'm like i need to get this down i need to i need to sing this i need to remember i need to remember this you know i, I just find it like so funny like uh how how that works like um like for example like there's this really um a uh, funny anecdote from uh, danny elfman um, where like he was at his do- like he was at his daughter's wedding and like mid ceremony while like they're reciting their vows and stuff like he got like, he got like it- an idea that like he wanted to put down or like just like sing into like his phone or something but like he couldn't because like it was his daughter's <laughs> wedding so like he's just stuck there like not being able to do it and it's just like it's just like like scenarios and situations like that is like where the ideas suddenly seem to pop up and like it's. I don't know how to explain it or why that ever happens, but it's just you just have to learn to make do with it. You it's the zone of creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when you end up uh, having news for that, where can people find it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So whenever I have news for that, whenever I announce um, uh, those things, uh, definitely gonna be able to find find it on uh, any streaming service uh, of your choosing, whether that be Spotify, whether that be Apple Music, or whether that be SoundCloud or Tidal or Bandcamp or, you know, any <laughs> any other any other uh, streaming service, any other um, avenue for music listening, uh, that is going to be where my next project is going to be out. I'm also debating maybe if I want to, like, have some physical uh, copies of it, you know, get some maybe get some vinyl presses or get some get some CDs or, or some uh, cassettes, you know. Mm. Like I'm I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking about that, but um, I mean that that's like a whole other process <laughs> that I'd have to do by myself. <laughs> and, uh, I already do way too many things on my own <laughs> and struggle with them. And uh, you got to measure it out. Yeah, I gotta measure it out. Gotta be able to like. Pros myself. and cons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I have to think. Like, is it really worth it to like put in an order of like vinyl? If, like, yeah. Nobody's gonna, like, if nobody's gonna like buy it or purchase it or something like that. I'm also in the midst of working on some other non-music things, which I'm not going to reveal right now, but they Ooh. should be headed uh, people's way uh, fairly soon. Very cool. So very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, okay. I guess I guess it's also time to plug uh, plug uh, the social. Yes. Yeah. So yes. um. Yeah. So so because of that, if you're curious about any of my um artistic endeavors, 
uh, check out uh, Sammy XX Sprinkler, my Instagram name. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I, I post there anytime that I have like an announcement for whether I'm playing a show or whether I have something coming out or you know I want to announce um, a new project in the work, just like uh, things like that. Yeah, this is all things uh, artistically and creatively uh, related uh, can be found there. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Before we wrap, do you want to uh, give any shout outs? Yeah, yeah. First, I'd like to shout out uh, my music tech uh, professor, uh, Dr. Jen. Uh, thank you very much for having me in your studio. I know I a handful at times, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I really enjoy uh, all the things that we do. Um, I'd also like to shout out everybody else in the uh, music tech studio, Roars Lab. Uh, all you guys uh, are awesome, and I uh, really uh, love getting together with, um, with you guys uh, every week. Um, I'd also like to, again, shout out uh, my band, uh, Fretless Acacia. Um, you guys are all really good, uh, amazing musicians and super talented. And I, and you motivate me like every day to uh, get better. I'd also like to shout out an art professor that I had in the fall and that I'm still regularly in contact with. And I play with in the group Don't Panic is Completely Safe, uh, Mr. Rudy Shepard. Um, shout out to you. It was just a complete chance encounter that we stumbled upon each other. I just happened to be in your uh, art class and we just happened to hit it off because we both love music so much. And uh, I'm sad to see you go, but uh, I'm, you're, you're not going to be that, that easily, that's all I'll say. <laughs> very cool. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm sure they'll love to hear you on, on, on record. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? Well, uh, anyway, I guess I'll say thank you so much for coming yeah, on. Course, I yeah. really appreciate having you. Yeah, thank you and so much. For all y'all listening at home, thank you so much for giving us a listen. If you uh, want more updates on the show, if you just want to see uh, what I've got going on, uh, you can follow me at Aiden's Portfolio. If you are an artist who would like to come on the show, please look to that also, uh, that Instagram as well. That's A-Y-D-E-N-S Portfolio. You can find all the relevant forms there to apply. And uh, just, yeah, thank you again for listening as always have a wonderful morning evening night whatever and uh take care you want to say bye sam uh, bye everybody thank you for listening Ciao. and checking me out bye <laughs>